Good afternoon Year 6. So today we're going to be doing some geography and our geography skills are focusing on reading OS maps. So you can see these three different learning challenges that we're going to be tackling today. So we've got can you confidently explain scale and use maps with a range of scales? Can you use OS maps to answer questions? And can you accurately use a four figure grid reference? Okay, so what I've done is I've got here a OS map of Nottingham. Now, OS stands for Ordnance Survey, um, and it is basically a breakdown of the area. OK, so it's a way of looking at the area uh, on a map. Now, obviously, this map um, is not to scale, which means that it's not the same size as Nottingham itself. Otherwise, the map would be absolutely useless. It would be way too big. So what they've done is they've drawn on a, to a map all of the um, the area around Nottingham, all of the different streets and the um, the churches and the museums and everything like that, um, and they've shrunk it right down so that it's on a scale that you can see. So on the front of the map, what they've done is they've given us the scale. Okay, so we can see that four centimeters on the map is actually worth one kilometer in real life. Okay, um, and another way they've written it is one to 25,000. So I'm gonna just explore that with you in a little bit more detail. So if you think about four centimeters being the same as one kilometer on the map, um, then if I used my division knowledge, I would know that one centimetre on the map would be the same as 0 0.25 kilometres. OK, um, and the way that I know that is because if I've divided that number by four, I've got to divide that number by four as well. And I know that, that one divided by four is 0 0.25. I know that from my fractions, decimals, percentages, equivalents. OK, um, so if it's 0 0.25 kilometres, then using my conversion of units of measure, I also know that 0 0.25 kilometres is the same as 250 metres. And I also know that 250 metres is the same as 25,000 centimetres. Okay, now I can see that one centimetre on the map is the same as 25,000 centimetres in real life. And that's where we can see this scale here. Okay, so those two scales are basically telling us the same thing. So here I've opened the map up on Long Eaton. Okay, um, and let's say, for example, I was going to go on a walk around Long Eaton and I wanted to work out the distance from Trent College here to Wilsthorpe School. So I can see the school there and I can see Trent College School there. So if I wanted to work out the distance, I could get my ruler, which I have to admit I don't have with me. So this is an activity that you can have a go at. Um, I would measure the distance between Trent College and Wilsthorpe. Now, if I measure it as the crow flies, which is what we an expression that we use if we say going just straight from there to there, the quickest way possible, um, then that would give me one measurement. But actually, if you think about how I get from Trent College to Wilsorp, I can't just go across this bit here because there's no path. And I can't just cut across the grounds here because there's no path. So I've got to think about using the roads. So actually, when I measure my distance, I might have to measure up to this road here, then along this road here, then up this path here. So my distance isn't going to be direct from there to there. I'm going to have to measure each individual little bit. OK, so let's say that I measure it. And uh, this section here is half a centimetre and this section along here is one centimetre and this section up here is one centimetre, okay? So I've measured that and on the map it's two and a half centimetres. So I know that one centimetre is worth 0 0.25 kilometres, uh, but I want to have 2.5 centimetres because that's the distance that I'm interested in, okay? So turn one into 2.5 I can see that I've times it by 2.5 so I've got to do the same to this side okay so I would do probably 250 meters times by 25 I'm going to work that out here 
So zero, five is a zero, I'm oh, sorry. Five times five is 25. Five times two is 10, add two is 12. Zero, 10, four, five. So that would be the same as 3,250 meters or 3.25 kilometers. Okay, so the scale is really helpful for working out how far you're going to be traveling um, when you're using the map. And people tend to use these kind of maps when they're going to be doing walking um, or horse riding or bike riding, that kind of thing. Um, so it's helpful for them to know how far they've got, they've got to go. So that covers our first skill of explaining scale and using maps with a range of scales. So for your first activity to tick off that learning challenge, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to have a look at the map and I'd like you to find some different places that you know in Long Eaton. And I'd like you to see if you can work out the distance on the map and then turn it into the distance it would be in real life based on the scale that you've been given. Okay, good luck. Right, so as you can see, this Ordnance Survey map, when it's fully opened, is huge, okay? It's really, really big. Even though they've scaled it down, um, it still is really big. So it's very helpful. It's got lots of great information on it, and it's actually double-sided, okay? So what people tend to do is fold it up so that they can only see the bit that is of importance to them, okay? However, uh, it does have something very important that is worth taking a note of, and that is the key, okay? So down the side, you can see that it tells you um, what each symbol on the map means. So it tells you the different types of roads you can get, railways, um, footpaths, okay, bridleways. So this is really important if you're planning like a, a walk or a horse ride, then you would need to be able to take note of these different lines that are going to show you where you're allowed to walk or where you're allowed to ride on your horse. Okay, uh, and then as we come down, it's got um, lots, lots, lots more information. Okay, it tells you things like what type of land it is. So woodland or orchards. Okay, um, it can tell you, um, you know, the, the, la the land features. Uh, and then it gets lots of information that tourists might want to know. So for example, where there are car parks, where there are... Um, pubs or cafes um, it can tell you where there are campsites so for people that are planning a big weekend away to do lots of walking all of this information is going to be really really useful so what I'd like you to do uh, is I'd like you to have a look on the map of Long Eaton and see how many of these different symbols you can pick out uh, and see if you can write a key of your own to go with the map that you've got so you might want to draw some of these little pictures um, and write down what they represent on the map. Good luck. So the final skill is being able to use a four figure grid reference, okay? So what you'll notice um, if you're looking at an Ordnance Survey map um, is that along the bottom and up the side, it's got numbers and all the way along there are these very faint squares, these faint lines that make squares, okay? Um, and what these numbers are then used for is a bit like reading a graph, um, is a grid reference, okay? So we're going to focus on just using a four-figure grid reference, okay? Because the letters on the x-axis, sorry, the numbers on the x-axis are only two digit and the numbers on the y-axis are two digit. So when I put two of those together, it will give me a four-digit number. So for example, if I was looking at this part of the um, A6 and the A50 where it joins, uh, and I wanted to say to somebody, if you look at your map, um, you'll find it, and instead of having to say you'll find it in the bottom left-hand corner of your map, you can say you'll find it at grid reference 4030. Okay, so it's in the box of 40 on the x-axis and the box of 30 on the y-axis, so it's a bit like giving a graph reading. Okay, so it's 40, 30, okay? Now, that example, probably if you said the bottom left-hand corner, that would be really easy. But if you were trying to say to somebody where, um, for example, um, Friesland Farm was in Sandy Acre, let me find it here, okay? Um, and you couldn't say to them, oh, it's kind of in the, in the bottom 
uh, left-ish area by the big motor, you know, it's hard to, to explain to them. So if you can give them a four-figure grid reference, it helps them get there a lot quicker. So I'm going to look at the box where Friesland Farm is in. So it's in this bit here. Okay, so I'm looking at this line to the left-hand side of it. I'm going to follow that down and that goes to 46. So the first part of my grid reference would be 46. Then I'm going back up to Friesland Farm and I'm going to the line just below it there. And I'm going to follow it across until I meet the y-axis, which is 36. So coincidentally, Friesland Farm is at 46.36. So I could say to my friend, oh, look on your map at 46.36. It's in that square. And they go, oh yeah, here, I found it. Perfect. Okay. So that is why we use a four-figure grid reference. It just helps us to locate things nice and easily, okay? So your challenge now is to come up with some Ordnance Survey map questions, okay? So using the part of the map that you've got, I'd like you to think about questions about distances between places, I'd like you to ask questions about what there is in Long Eaton. So, for example, how many golf courses are there? How many pubs are there? How many schools are there? Um, and I'd like you to think about using your four-figure grid reference to pick out uh, particular points uh, on the map for a friend to identify, okay? So just have a go, have a bit of an explore of the area on the map, see if you can plot some journeys and see how you get on. Have fun!